Hello there everybody and welcome back to the channel. Dodgy Gamer here, international manager of mystery, managing obscure nations so you don't have to. Last time, of course, we left things hanging with three job offers from Niger, Rwanda and Tanzania on the table. And eventually, we decided to leave behind the tropical beaches of Fiji and board a jet plane to somewhere new. Somewhere still with tropical beaches but also with the rolling plains of the Serengeti. Welcome to Tanzania. But before we take a look at our new nation, a quick reminder, this is your one-stop shop for all things international management on Football Manager. So if that's your kind of thing, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, get the bell on for notifications so you don't miss any of the international action. Oh, here we are then, a new job in charge of the Tafia Stars, and apparently the unanimous choice of the FA. Helps when only one person applies, no doubt. And we take over a nation ranked 133rd in the world, and with top players based in Europe. France, Czech Republic, Spain, England. Not the greatest clubs, perhaps, but a big change from our previous jobs. So we take over with Tanzania, having failed to qualify for the African Cup of Nations, and off to a poor start in a tough-looking World Cup qualifying group. Upon taking over, we had a couple of friendlies lined up. We had a win in our first match in charge over Niger, who of course also offered me a job, 1-0. But then we, in our first home game, went down 2-1 to Central African Republic, as we were looking to find the right formation. And we eventually settled on a 4-3-3 with the defensive midfielder anchor man, an adaptation of the tactic we had used with Angela. So let's see how this works with half-decent players in the squad this time. Fast-forwarding then to June and more friendly action, we started out with a win over Rwanda, the third team that offered me a job, and then we travelled across the continent for a hard-fought draw away to Mauritania. But right after those friendlies, news of something that had attracted me to this role. The chance to compete in the Sisafa Cup. What exactly is the Sisafa Cup? Well, this is a biannual tournament for the 12 members of the East African Football Federation. Two groups of six play in a single round robin with the top two progressing to the semi-final round. That meant a guaranteed five games of competitive action was coming our way in September. Now, in our particular group, Sudan would probably be the favourites, but could we join them in second place? Well, first we would play two warm-up games against close rivals, Kenya, and hosts Somalia. Now, hopefully the Mogadishu Stadium would be in better condition once we arrived. 1-1 one, one was a decent result against the strong Kenya side, but looking at the stats, we probably should have won that one. And a comfortable 2-0 victory over Somalia wrapped up our warm-up program nicely with a brace from Mokake. This guy, a regen playing in the Spanish leagues with pretty decent mental stats, I would say. Unfortunately, as he was based in Spain, he would not be available for the Cisafa Cup. As this tournament took place in September, outside the international window, we could only name African-based players. However, this would likely hit our opponents more than it would hit us. Of that, I was sure, boy. On to match day one then, Rwanda. A team we had already beaten in a friendly. Could we do it again? All right, opening game then of the Sisafa Cup. Tanzania, Rwanda. Can we get ourselves off to a winning start? All right, we're passing the ball around nicely here. Rwanda sitting back. Big ball up to Salum. Oof, nearly, nearly. Good start from us, though. We're taking the game to them early on. Right, let's encourage the team. They're off to a good start. I just got to make sure we don't fall behind to a silly goal, like a long ball over the top. Mm, damn it. Damn it, that's not what we wanted. Right, definitely demanding more from this team now. Started brightly. We need to get back into this before half time. Salum, there we go. Get in. Oh, look at this. Nice. Picked out his spot nicely. Perfectly timed run. 
One touch to control. Keeper didn't stand a chance. Let's get a second before half time. Show Rwanda who's boss. It's good though, they're being patient. We're taking our time with the build up. Saloom again. Saloom has two attempts. First was saved, second was side netting. Alright, good response from us to going behind though. This is what we like to see. Ulim Wengu. Come on, let's get the cross in. Mao. Majiguro, come on. Oh! Oh! What a peach of a goal from Lianga. Get in. Oh, I like that one. Let's see that one again. Ah, oh, it just looked like we, we'd been caught in possession on the left. But look at that. One touch, turn, boom. Now here's a question for you football manager players. Um, with, with those instructions that we can use, what are your like default ones that you have from the start of the game and what are the ones you save to use depending on how the game's working out? Like, Do any of you play with work the ball into the box? from the start of the game. Oh, look at that. Ulim Wengu makes it 3-1. Nice and easy does it. Fantastic start to the half. One hour in. Oh, we've got a two goal cushion. We should, should be able to see this out. But no guarantees in football, of course. We've seen teams blow stronger positions than this before. All right. Can we make it? Oh, good strike, good save. To work the ball into the box is interesting. You always have it on. Okay, interesting. I guess, yeah, if you're playing Tiki Taka. But Tiki Taka is just not the dodgy game away. Oh, Saloom. 4 1. Ah, those memories of going a goal down seem distant now. A victory earned then and earned in style. A great team performance getting us the three points. Our next game would be an interesting one. Zanzibar, a collection of islands that are officially part of Tanzania, but compete separately, though they are not recognized FIFA members. Now the match preview labeled us as hot favorites and the pre-match odds. Oh, have you ever seen anything like that before? I mean, I wouldn't blame you for putting a few pounds or dollars, whatever your currency is on Zanzibar, with those odds. Would we live up to our 25 to 1 odds on favourite tag though? Let's find out. Here we go then, Zanzibar Tanzania. Zanzibar 10,000 to 1 to win this game, which seems to be being held again in the car park stadium. Well, let's see. Hopefully they don't upset the odds. A win for us would be massive here today. Is Grobelar in the tournament? No, Zimbabwe would go into the Kosafa Cup, so no Grobelar around for this one. Uh, let's have a look. Ulim Wengu. Oh, Salum. Wow. Ah, offside. Ah, we kind of made made their defenders look a bit silly there, but yeah, okay. They work the offside trap well. Wow, here we go. Salum. Salum. This allowed again? Ah. Oh, we've been worked by the famous Zanzibar offside trap. Yeah. They did get him there. They all stepped up. He didn't. Okay. Starting with Zanzibar on the ball, but immediately dispossessed. That's what we like to see. Ulim Wengu, come on. Let's get the ball into the center. Here we go. This is the first goal, and it's not offside this time. Kichia gives us lead. Took half an hour. Maybe the maybe the bookies were so sure that Zanzibar are going to lose, or just not win, that uh, yeah they put out odds that was going to tempt everybody to bet. Oh, penalty in the forty-third minute. I meant not the sixtieth. Right, let's put this one away. Come on, make ourselves two 0 up before half time. Salum has missed. Oh, right now it makes sense. That was that was the extra little add-on to the bet and Tanzania to miss a penalty in the first half. Right, come on. Let's see how many we can get to before the end of the night here. Ah, come on. Get the ball. Work it into the middle. That's it. Lianga. Kichuya. Comedy goalkeeping helps us out. 2-0. So we did get a goal right on 60 minutes. Just wasn't a penalty. But it'll do. Ah, oh, there we go. 
<laughs> Lovely goalkeeping. He was he got in the right position, he got his hands to it. But he just couldn't save the shot. Ooh, Zanzibar threatening there with the goal. I wonder if they're 10,000 to 1 to win the match, what are the odds of them just scoring a goal? Those must be pretty long odds as well. All right, there we go. Lo lovely counter-attacking move. Lyanga, boss in the midfield once again. Well, 20 minutes to go. We can add another, another goal or two. Might help us with the goal difference. That could come in crucial in terms of deciding final positions in the group. Right, here we go. Come on. Mini Mami. And it's come through to the substitute, Lyanga. He does what Salum could not. And gets behind the defence to score. Get in. 4 nil. All right. 4 nil in the end then. Comfortable win. Got to be happy with that. Nothing like winning an international competitive game in front of a multi-story car park. Easy enough in the end. Not quite as easy as the odds had suggested, perhaps, but decent enough. That put us in a strong position in Group B, especially with favourite Sudan having suffered a shock defeat to Burundi. And indeed, it was Burundi that we would face next. Could we make it three wins out of three? Right, let's see what we can do here. We're starting off. It's a nice fetching blue Tanzania playing. Matches their flag, I suppose. Come on, Saloum. Get the cross in. Oof. Header's blocked. Still got the chance, though. Come on. Let's get the ball back in the danger zone. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Turn and shoot. No. Oh, look at that. Oh, he knows... Kichuya knows that Lyanga's got that thunderbolt in him, so he laid the ball off. Oh, that was a beautiful strike. Oh, look at this. He just, yeah, says, here you go, son. Have a crack at that. Boom. Quite a strike from Lyanga. Bit worried here that although we've dominated, we're only 1-0 up, and all it's going to take is one little sneaky attack from Burundi. And we lose out on three points. Yeah, Mark Hughes brought in a lot of journeymen. Yeah, Mark Hughes, is, he had a strange career as a manager. Oh, there we go again. Lyanga with another Thunderbolt. Wow. <laughs> He's a net buster, this one. It's three in this competition already, isn't it? Wow, look at that. Just whacked it first time. Get in. Anyway. Let's see what we can do. Can we add a third here? Oh, what was going on with Lyanga? Wow, the most powerful right foot in East Africa. <sighs> Two fantastic screamers from outside the box and a third reverberating the crossbar late on. Three out of three it was then with Ayub Thunderbolt Lyana providing the screamers. Top of the group, we remain then with a win in our next game, the target for a place in the semi-finals. Ethiopia would be our opponents. On paper, the weakest team in our group, but after what had happened at the Oceania Nations Cup when Fiji took on Cook Islands, we would be taking nothing for granted. As we get ready for Ethiopia, Tanzania, our penultimate game in the group stage. All right, quiet game so far. Lyanga sets it up, though. Nondo with the goal. Nondo owns a chain of fast food restaurants in Tanzania, so I'm told. Ooh, Sudan 2-0 up against Zanzibar already. There we go. Flat Earth FC. Yeah, I think they're in, uh, in the Spanish lower leagues, aren't they? Something like that. Strange. Flat Earth stuff gets everywhere these days. Anyway. Yeah... Flat Earth FC would be a strange one. Oh, there we go. Lyanga. Daniel Lyanga this time. Scored from inside the box. All right, 2-0 up at halftime. Pretty plain sailing so far. Ah, uh, Lama, I see you're bringing up uh, Northern Mariana Islands. The Thundercats. Yeah, I remember that now. And Chicken in FC in Zimbabwe. Yes, I've seen them come up before as well. Yes, perennial favorites, those. Oh. 
Oliver Saunders, hello, good evening, welcome to the stream. Oh, you've just arrived as Ethiopia pull the goal back. A glimmer of hope for them. Yeah, I think we've just secured qualification for the semi-finals. So you join us at a good time. A match and scoreline perhaps closer than they should have been, but nevertheless, qualification for the semi-finals had been confirmed with a game to spare. Now, we needed just a point in our final game to secure top spot in the group, but we would be coming up against Sudan, who would be looking for a result to guarantee their passage out of the group. A tough game awaited. So Sudan, Tanzania, final game of the group stage. Whoa, let's see how this plays out. Fantastic first half. <laughs> from this end, okay. Fine. There's no goal updates that I noticed from the other games. Here we go. We finally got a highlight. Sudan on the attack. Ooh, it was too many men back to defend that free kick. Come on, let's get the ball off them and launch a counter attack. Yep. Yeah. Oh no, Mao's getting himself sent off. He's been shown the little red book. Off he goes. So I think there's optimistic predictions of. Tanzania win or a high scoring game look like they're going to go out of the window I'll settle for a draw at this point just to give us that momentum going through in first oh dearie me how did that go in uh, goalkeeper reacted way too late for that ah uh, dearie me look at this goalkeeper just ball watches defenders do the same Ah, there's no way that goal should have been scored. Lyanga cuts inside. What's he going to do here? Is he going to play anyone in? Is he going to shoot? He is. Could... <laughs> he did that. He did the whole loop around. And then <laughs> the animation shows him applauding. Like he's applauding himself. Sudan then just too good in the end. No surprise from the defending two-time champs. And made no easier by Mao's sending off. The feat, however, was not enough to cost us first place, as goal difference kept us ahead of Sudan. Over in Group A, Kenya had dominated with five wins and five clean sheets, while Uganda had survived the scare to edge out South Sudan. And it was Uganda, then, that we would face in the semi-finals. How would we fare against a team ranked in the world top 100? Let's go match side. And find out. Right then. So here we go. Tanzania, Uganda. It's the semi final of the Sisafa Cup in Somalia. Can we join Kenya in the final? Kenya are big rivals, of course. We've already played them at the start of the stream in a friendly. Let's see. Off to a great start. No. Saloom. How many goals has he had disallowed in this tournament? Now. I think that's three disallowed goals and a missed penalty in this tournament for Mr. Saloon. Still, we'll stick with him. We know we've got a decent replacement for him if we need to make a change in the second half. Right, Kichuya, come on. Oh, we've hit the post this time. Close. <sighs> we've been the better team so far, but we've got to turn this advantage into a goal. Mm, this is where Uganda score, isn't it? Okay, maybe not. Lyanga, a bit far out for him to shoot, but he can get himself into a position. Come on, Lyanga. Agonizingly wide. No, here come Uganda. They're going to sucker punches right before half time. Oh, don't let them do this. Oh, terrible ball. Back straight to Salum. He's all the way on his own, and he scored finally, Salum. Oh, so many missed chances, so many disallowed goals. Oh, and he gets a gift, a literal gift of a goal. How ridiculous is that? A guy on the edge of his own area passes the ball back to the halfway line. Five seconds later, we've got it in the back of the net. Fantastic. Oh, well, oh, we are not done with this half yet. Right, there's more to come. Come on, then. Do not let Uganda equalize here. Saloom again. The back pass. He picks it up. Is it going to be a second? Yes. Oh, what is going on here? That is absolutely crazy. Two almost carbon copy goals in the space of a minute. Oh, nuts. 
Wow. And in the meantime, thank you very much for the raid, Unkang7. Much appreciated, and thank you as well for the follow. Just get a quick praise shout out. Okay, good. Oh, bit of a uh, bit of risk taken from the goalkeeper late on. We don't want to concede a silly goal now, because I mean we saw in the first half. Oh, here we go. Salum is going to score late in the half again. Is he? Maybe he's got a second chance here. Not quite. Oh, looks like he was almost getting into a fight with the defender there. Okay. Ah, oh, would have been nice if he'd got another kind of late goal. But yeah, I mean we got. Two goals in the same minute there. 45 plus one. Both of those goals from Saloon. Gifted to him by Uganda. Thank you very much. Uh, I still laugh at those first half goals. A pair of wonderful gifts. Thank you, Uganda. Thank you. Elsewhere, Kenya beat Sudan by the same scoreline, meaning they had made it to the final without conceding a single goal. Despite Kenya being the form team of the competition and the favourites, this was a final. This was a one-off game and this was a team that we had outplayed in that pre-tournament friendly. So maybe, just maybe, we stood a chance. So here we go. Tanzania, Kenya, Sisafa Cup final. We didn't expect to be here so soon. Hopefully we can put in a good performance. Kenya... Going close early on there. Okay. So, Aragon, you've only been playing football manager for two years. Wow. Okay, it must be... Oh, no. We're 1-0 down. Oh, Clifton Miheso with the goal. Too easy, that one. Anyway, here we go. Can we get straight back into this? Come on, we've got a highlight straight from the kickoff. Banda. Kichuya. Come on. Work that ball into the box. Come on, you can do this. Okay, patient build-up. Saloom. Ulimwengu, he's got a man outside him. Oh, we just can't find the opening. Oh! Oh, oh! Almost. Almost some trademark comedy goalkeeping there. Which we've seen a few times in this save. And the highlight continues. And it's Kenya coming forward. Good, good, good defense from us. So, oh, okay, did you get into it when Epic Games did the free giveaway? Oh, no, we've given away a penalty. Oh, no. Kenya are going to win this tournament without conceding a goal, aren't they? Damn. <laughs> Bearded twig, yes. Run away before it takes over your life. There's still time to get out. Otherwise, you'll be sat here in like 10 years' time having played 800 hours of the latest version of the game and thinking, oh, I didn't really get into the game this year. I only played 800 hours. Yeah, when I look at my most played games on Steam, it's like the top eight. They're all football manager games. Anyway, can we get back into this? Come on, goal here would make things interesting. Saloon, get in. All right, the comeback is on. We're the first team to breach Kenya's defense in this tournament. Here we go. Sure, boy. Come on, substitute getting involved. Mao. Mao! Wow! What a goal! Chairman Mao, get in! Oof. Oh, we've pulled it back from 2 0 down. Oh, that was a fantastic strike. Oh, yes, look at that, Mao. Plenty of space to turn. Oh, that was tasty. Get in. Okay, more highlights to come here. Oh, are we going to turn this around completely? Come on. Majoguro. Lyango, we know he's got a fierce shot in him. He gets it back. No, he doesn't uncrank it this time. But, uh, sure, boy. Oh, get in. Get in. The substitute in his last ever game before retirement has just scored a goal that possibly wins us this tournament. Oh, what a comeback. What a comeback. Oh, look at that. That was a fierce enough shot. And sure, boy, sure as you like, reacts first, taps in, get in. Oh, I don't want to touch anything now. Let's just let the clock run down. Can we do it? Yes. Oh, what a comeback win. And Tanzania win a trophy at the first time of asking. Oh, that's what this is all about. Ah, oh, that's why we love international management. 
Here we go. Fireworks exploding above Mog Mogadishu this evening. There we go. Yes. Oh, we've done it. We've won the Sisafa Cup. What? What an achievement. Absolutely fantastic scenes here. But can you believe it? We actually won. What a comeback. One of the all-time great FM comebacks. And just as with Fiji, we had won our first tournament in charge. Our unexpected victory had the big wigs at FAHQ in delight, and the fans as well showing their gratitude. We were labelled as tournament overachievers, as well as the champs, and rightly so. The sedan result aside, we played a great tournament. But no time to celebrate though, as we would soon face Tunisia in a World Cup qualifying match. That match, though, will be saved for next time, as this episode has already run its course. A second trophy then for the International Manager of Mystery, in only our third job. Would it get any better? We'll tune in next time to find out. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, get the bell on, so you do not miss any of the future international action. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I am Dodgy Gamer, International Manager of Mystery. And I'll speak to you again soon.